sun than the moon does. So with, during a total solar eclipse, we can see closer to the sun than, than even in a spacecraft in space. That's right. A total solar eclipse allows us to see really in close to the sun because the moon is such a perfect fit for the size of the sun. And that's really good because you see the area close to the sun where the solar wind is accelerated and where the corona gets so hot, and that's where all the action is. Wow. Well, this is great for the sun, but what does it mean for us here on the Earth? Well, the solar wind coming off the sun extends way past Earth, way past Pluto, billions of miles out, and this forms an atmosphere of the sun. You don't think, you think of space being a vacuum, but there's gas out there, and that is the atmosphere we call the heliosphere of the sun. You can get storms in that atmosphere. These solar flares and coronal mass ejections actually cause storms to move out through space. And these storms can do a bunch of things. One of the most beautiful of them is that they cause the aurora, the northern and southern lights. We have an image of that right now. It's just really amazing. The, the solar particles energize the Earth's magnetic field Particles that are accelerated in that Earth magnetic field come in along the north and south pole magnetic field lines and glow when they hit the upper atmosphere in bright reds and greens and whites. It's really amazing to watch these ribbons moving high speed across the sky. It's really impressive. That's beautiful, but what else does it mean? <laughs> well, there's actually some dangerous aspects of these solar storms. They can d cause power outages right here on Earth. They can actually fry the power grid on Earth. And there have been power outages caused by solar flares. They can also damage spacecraft that we've got. And although the Earth's magnetic field protects the astronauts most of the time when they're on the space station, if they were astronauts were on the way to the moon or to Mars and outside of the protective shield of the Earth's magnetic field, it can actually give them enough radiation to sicken them. Wow. So, so now we were mentioning also that the corona is a million degrees, and I always wondered, so how does the sun at 6,000 degrees heat this corona at a, to a million degrees? That seems hard. The funny thing is, we don't know. What? <laughs> and we've been studying the sun for a long time, and we just don't know. But it's total solar eclipses like this here on Earth that allow us to see, like I said, the region where all the action is happening close to the sun. And so you can actually, not only are solar eclipses absolutely gorgeous, they can, and we can actually do really good science with them. That's great. So we have the beauty and the science together in a total solar eclipse. Yep, perfect. Well, right now, actually, a cloud has moved in and blocked our view of the sun. And it's uh, eight minutes to totality. And it's going to be a near thing about where, how that cloud moves. So we're on the edge yeah, of our seats right, right now yep. with what's going to happen. So let me, let me bring, bring on here um, to Rob to check in these conditions with a, an eclipse. a light meter. Well, you know, a light meter doesn't work very well when the cloud covers. <laughs> I think my measurements have gotten a little bit distorted. Definitely got darker here. In fact, it's kind of interesting. With this cloud cover, I'm down to 100 foot candles. Wow. That was 2,000 bright sun, 100 foot candles now. And we expect there's a little hole in the sky. I think we're actually going to make it, Paul. I, I, oh, there is a hole. I hope yep. so. <laughs> it's pretty spectacular. We get heard a lot of booing in the audience out here because they're really wishing these clouds to go away. There are also some interesting effects. Some of the cloud cover actually will start to disappear. It starts to get colder out here when the sun is getting more and more occluded by the moon. It, it definitely feels cooler to me. Yeah, it does to me, too. I'm starting to feel the uh, breeze. What's your thermometer say? Oh, it's down to 90 degrees from 101, ah. so we're down 10 degrees already. Uh, that's actually good. We've been really baking out here in the, in the, uh, in the uh, uh, desert out here. So actually what we're going to do is uh, probably switch back and forth between when we get a clear field view of the telescope views. Right now they're completely blocked out, but I think in about 30 seconds looks like we may be back into business here. Um, the audience is really starting to get excited out here. Everyone's got their telescopes up, ready to watch. People are stretched out over this plane for miles with setups. It's kind of incredible. I've seen more buses bring people in with telescopes than I've ever seen in my life. In, in fact, the, the thickness of the clouds right now, I'm not sure if we can get an image of, of the sun uh, up there in the sky, uh, but you, you can see it through the clouds as this thin arc of light as the moon races to cover the last bit of the sun. It's definitely getting darker here, and it feels a little darker than just cloud cover, I'd have to say. Oh, it does. It, well, there's only a few percent, I think, of the sun left, and that really is blocking it out. It's actually interesting that the, the clouds are acting as my safety glasses to watch the sun. You should never look at the sun, even in a partial solar eclipse, without some form of protection for your eyes.
Now might be a good time to remind folks that when we get to totality, we're going to take the filter off the telescope that's going to view to totality. You may see a little bit of shaking, but then the image should stabilize really well at that point. So half the crowd in the distance, I can see that they're in sunlight, and they just sent up a cheer because they can see the sun now. Oh, here we got, we have a diamond ring coming out on the sun, a really bright diamond ring. And, so let's uh, switch to the telescope views if we can. Okay. All right, telescopes still aren't picking it up. Still too much of a cloud cover blocking things. It's interesting, the eye can actually see something a little better. Yep, there's, there's still a bit of the, the sun shining around the edge of the moon, so we're not to totality yet. A little ways to go. Maybe that diamond ring was being caused by the clouds. I think so. I think it was a little <laughs> bit off. I was a little uh, yeah. uh, faked out there. Actually, if you look through a viewer, maybe we can see what's happening. Let's take a look. Oh, yeah. So, uh, indeed, there's still an arc of the, of the sun shining around the moon. Not to totality yet. Creeping on towards totality, watching how the cloud is moving. It's right on the edge. Oh, there we go. So here we go. You can see on, on the telescope the thin clouds that are in the way. So for the image, but we'll get it sharp in a moment here. Yeah. There it's sharpening up. Yeah, there, there we have that, that really bright part of the sun showing. And oh, it's, it's really getting dark fast now. The edge of the cloud, boy, this is going to be really close. We've got a, a cloud edge coming in as, as the moon moves over.